Hello and welcome, Gunpla Builders of YouTube. This is DZ Maven here once again with another Gunpla review. And today I'm taking a look at the Master Grade Wing Gundam. If you've been following my Gunpla Building tutorial series, you probably have seen a lot of this kit and the build involved in it. But now it is time to actually look at the kit and do a review of it. So let's get right to it here. Here it is, all put together in its basic form, just standing there looking all good here. But let's get that turned around here so you can look at it from a different angles here. Alright, so let's get right down to the details of this kit here. Overall, I say this kit is extremely good looking straight out of the box here. There's really only a few areas where, a few areas where you might have to do some uh, detail painting on it just to kind of make it look a little bit better. Uh, there is some, I did put some gray inside the vents inside the wings here, that, but they're kind of hard to see. I did paint the gray inside the shoulder vents, that looks a little better than the plain white, and there's also a little vent on the upper arm here that needs to be painted in. Um, in addition, there are supposed to be some little black vent areas on the toes, but these are not really sculpted in very well on the kit here, so they are kind of a, difficult to paint, but uh, if you want to be accurate, you probably you will have to try and paint those in here. Uh, Color-wise, it looks extremely good. The colors on this kit are actually pretty nice here. It's really bold, and it looks very, very accurate to the original anime line art here. I know some people prefer having gold on the wing kits. I mean, I guess that's sort of a carryover from the old high-grade kits that used gold chrome on the on the uh, yellow parts. But um, I always thought that was kind of a little tacky and overdone here, and I'm kind of glad Bandai just stuck to using this nice yellow color for these parts here. I think that actually works pretty nice here for it. Um, Proportion-wise, this is actually really darn darn good looking, and this is probably one of those few kits that looks good with or without any type of de uh, decals on it. Uh, it does come with stickers and dry transfers. It's it's up to you if you want to put those on. I mean, I had it for a while without them, and I thought it actually looked pretty good without them. So, again, that's kind of up to you, up to you, up to you if you want to um, use the uh, stickers provided here. Uh, overall, it gets a nine out of ten for me on the detail score. Like I said, really the only thing that kind of brought it down up brought it down a point was the fact there are some areas you probably do want to paint on it. And then additionally there is sort of an issue with one of the weapons here about which I'll get to on the extras here. Uh so let's get to articulation here. So let's go ahead and stop this here and take a closer look here. At this guy here. So starting at the head here, we've got a pretty nice range of motion on the head here. It can go look up pretty darn well on this kit here and look down if need be. Uh, it's supposed to go all the way around for transformation so it does that pretty nicely here. Arms can go up and down pretty nicely here. What's nice there is there really is a nice shoulder bend on this kit here. It actually comes out pretty darn far here you can see. That joint just comes all the way out there. And for the elbow joint it's not quite a perfect 90 degrees here because the little claws come out and of course the arm came off. Some of these joints in the arms don't have the most secure connections. They don't really lock in very well so they're just kind of, they're held in by friction only. So if you move around enough they will fall off. It will also fall off here at the elbow too. But yeah this is about what you can get out of the bend here. Not, oh, not a whole lot. Um, yeah, don't don't press down on this piece here. It comes out. All right, that's been this little claw moves back and forth a little bit. Hand is on a little friction joint in there, but it's got some good range of motion. It's not really a tight joint for the wrist here, so things may flop around if they have it just in the wrist by itself here. I do notice when I had did some uh, photo shooting and test fitting of this part, these side pieces of the arm like to come off a lot on on both sides here. So you might want to glue these on so you don't fall off on you constantly. Um, in addition to that, this little upper arm piece where this shoulder, where this uh, vent is too, likes to fall off too. So you might want to glue that in as well here. Uh, moving on down here, we got the waist here. Can bend back, bend forward, turn side to side and things will fall off, like the back skirt armor fell off. And but if you do want to get turned all the way around for transformation, you do got to lift it up and then turn it all the way around. And then you just push it back down again. So it kind of comes up a little bit here, and you got to push it back down here. Let me put this skirt armor back on here. Uh, these are all on ball joints. 
not 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 the most secure ball joints, but they stay on there pretty well here. Screw and armor can flip up and out of the way if needed. The side screws can flip up very well. In addition, they got this other joint in there that allows them to flip up for the transformation right there. Uh, they don't really turn at all, so they're kind of just they just go in one direction here. Back screw and armor can flip up as needed here. Again, this is on a little ball joint here. It kind of pops off pretty easily here, so you might want to take care of that when posing. Uh, leg legs can come up pretty good here. Get the skirt armor out of the way, and it will come up. I'll pretty well do splits here, and it can bend back here pretty well here. Knee bend is a double. There's a double joint in here for transformation, but just but if you want to bend like that, it bends pretty well on its own here. There's no armor split up here, but it does split down here on the vent here pretty nicely here. Uh, the foot will bend back pretty well, like so. And it can bend forward about that much here and side to side. It's not too bad. It kind of gets caught a little bit on some of the armor here because there's so much armor here, but it's not really that big a deal here. Um, and probably the last thing are these wings down here. These are pretty nice looking wings here. I pretty much like them here. They can rotate around. Um, move back and forth like so and there's also another joint inside the backpack here that flips up like that you can see it's splitting right here gives it a little bit of extra range of motion here in addition these wings will split open like that two splits one here and one here we're doing some inner fins and everything so so overall articulation is actually pretty darn good on this kit here uh, there are a few parts that fall off on it while you're moving it around you probably as you've seen here but it's actually pretty darn good for a master grade here, so it gets a 9 out of 10 on the articulation from me here. Alright, so let's take a look at extras here. Uh, well, actually, first thing, while I got it in my hand here, let me show you the cockpit hatch here. This does open up, and the back skirt's falling off on me again here. Get that on there. Now, to open the cockpit hatch on here, you have to kind of push this part forward, then it lifts up. Like so, then you gotta take this bottom piece and flip it down. And then there's a little hatch that flips out right there. Put this back down. Down. And there you go, there's your cockpit hatch here. It's a pretty small hatch here. I do have my Hero Yui figure in there, but he's kinda hard to see. Might be able to see him if I lift this up actually. And maybe you can kinda see him. You can kinda see him in here. You can see his feet. But yeah, he's in there. And let me close this back up here, just like that. Nice, nice, nice and flush there. Pretty good here. All right, so hands. Uh, while I got it here, you got these fixed pose hands here. Right now, I have the beam saber holding hands on here. Yeah. And just in that, you get your open palm hands like so. You get your trigger holding hands like so. And you get your closed fist hands, like so. Uh, they work decently enough, but there are some issues holding the shield with them, so I'll get to that in a second here. And you get your action base connector here. So, uh, let's look at the Buster Rifle here, which is the main primary weapon of the Wing Gundam here. Overall, it's nice looking, but it actually could be better. As you probably may notice here looking at it, there, it's pretty dark looking overall here. The plastic they use for this kit is some sort of dark gunmetal color here. It's a metallic, really dark metallic here. There actually are two tones of color on the Buster Rifle. It's really hard to see on here. But these little energy packs are slightly, ever so slightly darker plastic color here. And I, and I really, really wish Bandai had used a different color plastic for the main part of the uh, Buster Rifle here. Because it's, it's not really accurate. Because all the artwork I've seen on the Buster Rifle had it in more of this lighter medium gray color this is just way too dark plus uh, this is metallic plastic is really prone to bad nubs here I don't know if you can tell in the camera here but there's a lot of little black divots here where the nubs were you really can't hide that on this type of plastic here but it will open up if you want to take the energy packs out the splits open like so uh, not really any reason to take them out though but just kind of leave them in there and your handle, uh, the trigger finger hands kind of slot into the front of it and they hold onto it. In addition, there's a little back here, there's a little notch right here that hooks into the claw on it. And once the, the wing gun has the claw on it with the fist here, it has absolutely no problem holding this. It can 
you can shake it around, it won't drop it at all. So, it's actually a really good thing on Bandai they did that because this can point it straight out with no problem at all here. So, next thing here is the shield here. Pretty nice looking shield, looks nice and thick and hefty, but it's really not that heavy. Again, once it's, you know, once you get this on the wing Gundam, it has no problem holding it up here. Um, now it does come with an internal split here, I don't know if you can see here. But as you bend this down, this little fin here folds down, and the beam saber kind of slides out a little bit. A really nice little gimmick they worked into that. And there's your beam saber. Not much to it, just a basic beam saber. The kit comes with these little curved green blades here. You get two of them, but you only need one, so it's a basic beam saber. There's not much to say about it. But back to the shield here. There's a little clear piece that goes in the front of this here. You get a sticker for that. Um, I went ahead and painted it green, as you probably saw in my tutorial series, and it looks a lot nicer this way. On the flip side here, we have the attachment points and the handle here. Now this is where I start to have a problem with this uh, shield here. Uh, first, let's flip out the attachment the attachment peg here, which is this right here. Now, the way this works, this actually fits into a slot in the forearm. Then you got to slide it forward to lock it in place here. Uh, the problem is, is that this piece likes to move around a lot when you're doing that. Because when you try and slide it in, it pushes it back a little bit. Then you try and get it back in. Then you push it back. Then you try and get it back in, and whoops, the whole thing fell off. And that's really, really annoying. Cause this kind of leads back to a... Probably a continuing problem with this kit here is that none of these joints lock in place. They're all friction joints and they're not, they don't really lock in place as you put them in. They're just sort of held in by friction only and that's kind of an annoyance on this kit here. The other problem I have with the shield here is this handle here. Um, but the line art I've looked at for the Wing Gundam, this handle is technically upside down on the shield here. It's supposed to be the other way around, like this here, but it's, it's said it's upside down like that. And the problem is, the Wing Gundam doesn't really have a gripping hand. It's just a loose hand like this here. You fit this in here to, lo to this loose hand, and it just sort of falls out sometimes. So it's not really, it doesn't really have a good grip on that. In addition, the shape of this handle is really awkward. It's like a, like a thin, flat bar. But it's kind of at the wrong angle to fit into the hands very well, so it's always kind of it's always kind of stuck in a weird angle, and you have to kind of fiddle around with it for a long time to get to fit right into the hands, which is unfortunate. And if it doesn't fit right, again, it just sort of falls out. <laughs> so, yeah, Bandai probably could have done a better job with that, in my opinion. Here, so, so other than that, the only other thing you really got is this little hero Yui figure here. He's kind of in his tuxedo school outfit here. But, yeah, that's it. So, anyway, extras. I give this a 8 out of 10 on the extras here. They're not bad. I mean, they look good. Along with the kit here, like, and my general beef with them probably is the color of the Buster Rifle and the and the attachment system for the shield is really not that great here. But otherwise, they look pretty nice here, so. So let me get this guy into a nice little post view here, and then we'll talk about the value of the kit here. Alright, and I'm back here. I got him a nice little action firing pose here. And one more thing I forgot to mention articulation-wise. Uh, this guy generally has no problem standing standing with his wings outstretched like that. The wings really don't weigh that much. And surprisingly, this is probably, for a kit that has wings on its back, this is actually probably one of the only kits I can think of that actually can stand really well on its own without any assistance from any action base here. So, again, that's really something going, that's a, a good thing going for this kit here. Uh, so, getting on to the value here. This was a Master Grade kit that came out in April of 2010, so it's going on about 7 years old now. So, this is a 7 year old Master Grade kit here. Uh, retails for 4,000 yen, which is about $36. And considering everything this is, and that this kit actually, even for a 7 year old kit, it actually holds up extremely well today. You would almost think this was this was a Master Grade that was made today, because it's just it just feels like it's so well put together. Um, it's a fun build and it looks great straight out of the box here. And for the price of $36, I think it is totally worth having. I mean, if you are even a passing interest in Gundam Wing, this is probably a good kit to look at having here. Especially for you know, us in the West here who started out on Gundam. A lot of us started out on Gundam with Gundam Wing. So for a lot of us, the Wing Gundam was the very first Gundam we got exposed to. So this kind of holds sort of a 
special nostalgic place, especially for Gundam fans in the West here. Um, this gets a 10 out of 10 on value for me. It's an excellent buy, meaning if you see it, you should probably consider picking this up here because it's, that's a, it's a very nice kit here. So before I wrap up here, let me talk a little bit about the transformation of this kit here. It's not the most complicated transformation here. It's actually one of the simpler transformation transformation of a Master Grade kit, kit that I have built before. Uh, basically, the torso rotates around, head wraps around. Now, there is a double joint at the knees here. here. So actually, let me show you that here real quick here. I got here. Show you how that works here. So, you have the knee here, but it can bend forth like so. You have to kind of push this piece down like that. And then it flips up like that here. So this thrust over piece will fit back and leg will bend forth. That will be for the transformation here. And to undo it, just kind of got to push this black piece back up again here. That's back like that here. Um, arms here, there's a little shoulder here. Let me take the shield off here real quick here. These shoulder parts, they kind of pop out and then flip down here. There's a nice little white piece here. A light white piece, a little detail here. It's pretty nice here. And you have to take the hands off for this here. The This will open up and the claw thing will flip forward like so here. And just close that back down. This sort of forms the feet of the, feet of the wing Gundam here. Now there is one tricky part of this transformation that I always seem to have some problems with here. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you here. Let me flip this around the way it's supposed to be here. But it's these little side skirts here. They are, if you can tell here, they have kind of a. It's kind of hard to tell here in the light here. But there's a little notch in here. A little notch in here and it has to hook up into a little hook that's right here in the armpit and a lot of times it doesn't really seem to reach into there as you can see here and I'm trying to press this torso back down as far as it will go but it won't go any farther here Let's see if I can get that to line up a little bit better here and no I can't really get the catch on there here it's like once I get one side cut to uh, lock on, I can't get the other side to lock on, so it's kind of a weird problem with this kit here. The other thing here is that um, the arms will usually be bent at a weird angle when it's in transformation mode. As you can see, looking up, it's not straight. It's kind of at an angle, and I can't really push it down because, again, this side skirt is kind of keeping it from straightening out. So what I usually have to do is pull this out a little bit, and then the arm comes off. So it has to kind of be like barely on the peg there to look right here which is kind of a weird issue with this kit here but if you can make it work it'll look right in bird mode here and I'll just put a few pictures up of the bird mode here because I'm not going to go through the transformation here for this entirely here but as you can see here once you get in bird mode it actually looks really really nice here uh, it's really no problem with it you can get on the action base pretty nice and well with the same connector and it'll stay on there so there's really no issue holding it Alright, so yeah, I saw it in bird mode here. It, it works out pretty nicely in bird mode here. And once you get in there, it looks pretty nice, but generally I leave it in the mobile suit mode most of the time for posing here, because I just think it looks nicer here. So moving on to the total here, we get a total of 36 out of 40. So overall, this is an excellent Master Grade kit. It's a little on the basic side, not heavy on panel lining, but the colors look great. The basic proportions look great. It feel is relatively solid but there are some loose parts on it that kind of fall off now and then while you're trying to pose it and transform it but overall it's I, I enjoy it it's a pretty nice looking kit straight out of the box here so if you are interested in this wing Gundam at all definitely pick it up it is definitely recommended here so anyway that's gonna be it for this review here I hope you found that interesting and informative Again, you can look back at my Gunpla building tutorial series. You want to see some more details about this kit here and the, and, and the general build process of it. But anyway, uh, be sure to leave a like if you liked the video. Comment any uh, comments or questions below. And I will see you all next time with the next review. Alright, take care and bye-bye.